Hey everybody, welcome to Spill the Novel Tea, where three girlies shout into the void about our latest book hot takes and obsessions. I'm Abby. I'm Maddie. And I'm Kaylee. And this week we're spilling the tea about the highly anticipated new adult novel, One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. So if you're as enamored with the nightmare as much as we are, here's the tea. All right, so let's start with Elspeth's backstory and how she became acquainted with the nightmare. So basically, in this world or city or whatever they're in, um, children can become ill with a sickness that leads to magical powers. So long ago, the Rowan King sentenced all children who have this sickness, as well as anyone who knows about it and doesn't turn them in, to death. So Elspeth had this sickness as a child, but she escaped the physicians with the help of the nightmare. Nightmare came into her life when she picked up and tried to use the Nightmare Providence card, which we'll get into a little bit more later. Um, Nightmare is basically a monster that lives inside Elspeth's head, and she has to keep him a secret from everyone. So personally, I really enjoyed Elspeth's backstory. I thought it had a lot of potential. It was a little bit info dumpy at times, but so are all fantasy books when talking about the history of the world. Um, I also thought the opening chapter was really memorable and well written. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. Agree. Mm -hmm. I think it started super strong. I was super into, like you said, the first chapter. I was, like, frothing. I was like, this is a good time. Um, I really mm -hmm. liked the concept of, like, getting magic from, like, a sickness and, like, oh, it turns your veins dark and whatever. Like, it just was very – it's not that it was an entirely new concept, but it was unique enough that I was, like, interested to see where it was going to go with the nightmare being in her head um which I, I just I loved I loved him but we'll get to it later but that, like that really <laughs> stood out to me in the first chapter I was like oh, okay all right let's go yeah it's a strong start um and uh just the thought of the like infection um and magic being this thing to fear um and something to avoid I thought was really cool um and I love the idea of the cards in general like I just immediately it was it was giving tarot card to me which i just love mm -hmm. so um i was really interested from the from the get-go so strong start for sure mm -hmm. and the cards were a huge part of the book um they just kept popping up over and over um basically it's like there's a spirit of the wood that created 12 magical cards that give their users special powers and this is special powers outside of having to get magic through the infection so it's like Joe off mm -hmm. the street can have access through magic if he has a card. Um, so it's it kind of gives magic this like broader accessibility to people, but also in like a very class centered way because there's a limited amount of cards. So really only like the rich and powerful get the cards. Um, and then the flip side of it is that if you use a card, um, there's consequences to it. And that's unique to the card and I think also to the person um in some cases mm -hmm. so um mm -hmm. it's it's a balance of power um I liked this concept a lot um I thought the execution could have been a little bit better um I, I was definitely lost in the cards they they name a lot of them very quickly they lay out you know the mm -hmm. the structure of the cards but it, like Kaylee said, it's like it's very info dumpy and it's not something I was able to retain very easily. So I just kind of mm -hmm. like was cruising along <laughs> and saying like, sure, that makes sense. Um, but I like the foundation of cards having magic. Um, I didn't fully understand culturally why we're OK with the cards giving magic, but magic from the infection is bad. Um I, I don't know if, it, if, if, again, that comes back to, like, a class thing because the yeah. rich are like, yeah, I want to be able to use the card, so that magic is okay. But I don't know if that fully was made clear besides the fact that, like, that's how it's perceived is, like, card I, magic is I fine. Think it's, I think it's because while both of them come from the spear of the wood, one of them was given to the Rowans, you know, mm -hmm. the cards. And then the spirit of the wood completely controls, like, who gets the sickness. So I think mm. it's because they can control the Providence cards, but they can't control who gets the sickness and who gets magic. Gotcha. That's my yeah. understanding. Yeah. And then I think that it probably kind of turned into a bit of the class thing as well. Like, maybe initially yeah. it was just because of how it can be controlled. And then because cards are a matter of, 
who gets to actually own them. I'm sure that that's an aspect that comes into play. So, yeah, I, I really liked the card idea. I did think it came in a little bit too conveniently sometimes, like how Raven just happened yeah. to have the nightmare card and there are only two of them and Elspeth's uh, uncle had the other one. I also found it really convenient that both Raven and Elspeth have card related abilities because like for her, she can see cards even though they're hidden. And for him, only certain cards can be used on him. I just, it was, it was a little too convenient. I'm like, of course it happens to these two who happen to be love interests, you know? Of right. Of course. Right. Of course. Yeah. yeah. It can happen, happen any other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There yeah. are no other cards that are notable except for the nightmare card. Cause obviously. Yeah. I, I agree. I thought they were convenient. And then I, but at the same time, I was surprised there wasn't more of a link, I guess, between the nightmare cards, like in my head, the nightmare monster like was the nightmare card so i was like yeah i don't know i was expecting there to be like some more significant link if raven has the nightmare card like between the two because like for her the yeah. nightmare card like is ingrained in her and so i don't know it just it was it was underwhelming and also uh like predictable at the same time i don't yeah. know yeah yeah and I guess that's because she like absorbs the cards. I guess that's how they they reasoned it in the book mm -hmm. is she like absorbs the cards that she uses. But I agree that there should have been a, a greater link between them. Yeah. 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 One thing I did like about it was um, her ability to like see the cards or like mm -hmm. guess kind of like their aura, um, their colors. Um, I did think that that was kind of cool. I do think it got you know, again, talking about being convenient, like it was very convenient that, oh, now we have this wonderful magical tool to go hunt down the cards. Like it was a convenient option, but I thought at least in the beginning of the book, I thought that was kind of cool that she could kind of know someone's like power just by mm -hmm. seeing them walk into the room when other people couldn't. So yeah, I thought that, that was interesting. Cool. I did think, so there was a moment where, um, cause she has absorbed her uncle's nightmare card. The card still exists, but she's absorbed possibly the power and so there was a moment where i thought when he brought the card to like the king or whatever they were going to realize or think that it was a fake because i thought mm. the inherent magic of the card was going to be gone um but that didn't happen so <laughs> i'm kind of like i don't know yeah. what girl absorbed or if they just That's don't a really have good a way point. to check if the surely they checked if the i don't know i just was i thought there was gonna be a thread to pull there of like right. th a consequence you know it's like she's absorbed yeah. it, but now that card is no longer like it doesn't work anymore usable especially yeah. because they emphasize that magic is balanced yeah. throughout this whole book it's like there's yeah. gotta be a consequence to yeah, that because essentially yeah. she's duping cards she has the nightmare card powers and now there's still two other cards that are usable you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> So, this is know. the first time I've thought about that. That was actually a great point. Like, yeah, I don't know. It definitely good, impact the card itself. Good plot hole. Yeah. 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 Good mm -hmm. good, good eye. Good eye. Mm -hmm. um, so we also have, um, speaking of the cards, um, they're obviously this huge motivator kind of throughout the book and a source of power, um, particularly like you mentioned, Maddie, for the rich or like royalty. Um, and so one day um, Elspeth is walking through the forest when some highwaymen um, try to tell her um, or sorry, to get her to tell them where her uncle's Providence cards are. Um, and one of these men happens to be none other than Raven Yu, who of course uh, becomes the love interest in the book. Um, so Elspeth asks the nightmare for help. And we learn that he can control her body and make her a strong fighter. Um, so we kind of learn all of this within this, initial highwayman attack scene. Um, I did really like the scene. Um, I also figured that, uh, well, first I like to see uh, the nightmare in his kind of full, full fledged uh, fighting mode. Um, he is so powerful. We're, we're big nightmare stands over here. And <laughs> um, it was really cool to like, see him take over, you know? Um, and I also really did like the scene because I figured that these characters would be significant in other ways throughout the book which of course they were um so yeah a good setup for um you know a lot of things that were to come throughout the story yeah 
Um, I I liked the scene a lot. Like I thought it was it was pretty creative. Um, at this point though, I did feel like it was pretty obvious that one of the highwaymen would become the love interest, even though obviously we didn't know who Raven was at this point, because um, Elspeth talks about how one of the highwaymen smells like I think it was cloves, but it might have been like cedar or something. And it's like whenever, I think they did that in Fourth Wing too. Whenever you talk about what someone smells like, you know that's the love interest. And I'm like, why you do just they know. do that? Because if I'm being attacked, I'm not going to. No, you're not sniffing for identification. No. <laughs> <laughs> he smelled like roses. <laughs> like, girl, he smells like sweat and shit. He's been on the road for how long now? Like, don't. Genuinely. Yeah, don't bullshit me. No, At yeah. least they didn't pull the he's kind of hot thing like Fourth Wing did. He's kind of hot. I kind of hot or whatever. It. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I okay. Yeah. I was trying to find because I was texting you guys while I was reading it, and I was trying to find the things that like once you read that line, you know that's your love interest. Um, because I was kind of <laughs> listen when Raven was introduced, I was like, please, please fucking tell me her love interest name is not Raven. Like I will off myself. And then also writing our notes for this episode is the first time that i'm finding out because i listened to the audiobook i'm finding out that his mm-hmm. name was spelled with a y double sin literally another version of myself that would be an insta dnf because like that's cringe um what i kind of like it i no. like it because it's typically a feminine name and we we're making it a masculine name i don't know i kind of like that why his name got fantasied it got why fantasied, is fantasied? why do <laughs> Yeah, like you can't just throw a Y in something and then be like, "This is a unique name." I'm just, I'm tired of the Ys. It's let's we're done, we're done. <laughs> but I texted the group chat and like Kaylee was a little further ahead and she was like, "Oh, it might be whatever." And then I was like, "Nope, she's telling me what Raven's hands look like." So it's all over. Like this is our it's guy. Over. Yeah, there are just some things that you read and you're like, "Oh, this is our dude." Like that's it. The it's smell how he smells. It's how his hands, hands look. <laughs> you just know. It's too much. Know. Yeah, I don't know. That's I liked point. the the highwayman scene. I thought it was interesting. Um, I did roll my eyes a little bit, like leading up to it, because she's like, "Normally, I would never take this path at night, but like, surely nothing bad will happen." And I was like, "Okay, so something bad is gonna happen." Okay, and she never usually walks this path, so it's the first time she's doing it. Okay, um, so it was a little, it was a little much, in that sense. But I liked the nightmare taking over and um that he's like just a little bit of a savage bitch and she needs that because also this is where we find out that elspeth is like the whiniest useless most scared (laughs) little girl just helpless doesn't do a damn thing to try and help herself she's just like please save me and she's just a little damsel in distress so i like that the nightmare was like don't worry boo i got this (laughs) We're going in nightmare mode, baby. Yeah, we're going to do some sick shit. <laughs> yeah. Watch this. Mm-hmm. Him every time, mm-hmm. basically. <laughs> Let me out, bitch. <laughs> Let me out. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, that brings us to Elspeth as a character, which her name has a P in it, by the way, if you're an audiobook listener. I don't know if... I, Kaylee, I'm sorry. I know you like this name. This is a sin. This is also disgusting to me. Um, but (laughs) she comes from a wealthy family called the Spindles. Um, she, which is kind of interesting. Um, I did like that she, um, was not, I like that she was part of the Royals. It wasn't your classic, um, poor girl getting integrated into like the Royal family sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a little different. Um, but my perspective is she was a bit whiny and I thought she was pretty stupid throughout the whole book <laughs> as a character. She was a little dumb. Um, she just like, like things are not clicking up there. And um, th- there are moments that are like set up and it almost feels like it's set up to show how clever she is, except she just like utterly fails at them. Um, like homegirl can't even think of a half truth like it's just kind of embarrassing for me because it's not done in like a way that it feels charming to me like oh she's a little himbo <laughs> you know it's just like she just kind of sucks um respectfully she's too old to suck this bad um i don't know and she oh. also like talks 
like a big game like she's like i had to fight to survive and be so clever and blah 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 blah. but like she can't i don't know she just can't do anything i'm like did you just you just stayed at home that's what you did to fight to survive you just stayed at home in the woods girl like yeah i don't know i don't know i i liked elspeth and at the beginning i really didn't expect that i would for a lot of the reasons that you're talking about the only thing that i really didn't like about her was that she was so disgustingly moral like our female Mm -hmm. main characters usually are like when she saved the boy she had to save that little boy i'm Mm -hmm. like you're risking the entire family of the use like Mm-hmm. for this little boy is mm-hmm. that actually moral you know what i mean and it was just so like yes typically how these books usually go where they just like have to do the right thing and it's i don't know i hate that i didn't like it captain america um, syndrome yeah true. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. mr Wright. yeah i also but- i really hated her dialogue everything she said I And the dialogue with this book was my biggest qualm with it, to be honest. It just all felt really forced to me. And every time I would read a sentence, I would, like, be, like, I literally put in my notes. I was, like, does anyone really talk like this? Like, no. I don't. I don't know. And that's how all of her dialogue felt. But overall, I did like her, and I do love her name. It was just the dialogue I did not like. I I wasn't a big fan. Um I I will say like I didn't hate her because there are a lot of female main characters that I like a lot less I just wasn't really drawn to her I didn't feel like she had um a lot of presence and if it weren't for the nightmare then she really wouldn't at all um so I yeah wasn't hate but wasn't drawn to her personally just kind of yeah she was there she was there but night nightmare now nah, nightmare was that bitch but I'm she was saying there. nightmare yeah. was that bitch she was there <laughs> right <laughs> He that's was, true. He was that's a good there, point. And he let everyone know it too. Yeah. Or he wanted to so bad. So let, let Maybe y'all can change here. my mind about liking Elspeth, honestly, because you're definitely right. Like you bring up some good points. It's I mean, I lie. think it's okay. She needs someone to support her. It's fine. She well, she wasn't I, again, I like didn't I didn't hate her or anything. Like there are times where um I don't know, a character will just have like terrible motivations or I don't know, just is hateable. And I didn't feel that way about her. I just was kind of meh she's all right she's there and on the other hand she does have reasons to be the way she is because she was Mm -hmm. so sheltered like she's stuck in a room stuck in her house all her life nobody knows that she exists like she probably hasn't had much human interaction like no wonder she's dumb she probably never like had any education or anything like that so that's really i mean I understand why she's dumb. I get why we don't like it, though. Yeah, and and I think to be fair to her, too, along the same lines, is like I kind of want her to be a little scrappy, and she yeah. doesn't really have the upbringing to justify being scrappy. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. She just she, it, she just I need her to have a little bit more fire, a little bit more will to try and figure things out herself. Because which we'll talk about yeah. this later, but like that ends up biting her in the ass the fact that she just instantly like in every situation she's like nightmare sos help me brother so yeah in that sense it is it is balanced and she does kind of get punished for it but i don't know that's true yeah um well that brings us to raven who is the king's nephew he's the captain of the destriers i think that's how you say it Mm -hmm. the destriers are basically the law enforcement of this world or city i still don't know do you guys know if it's a city or if it's a world like do we know well i assume it's a kingdom kingdom yeah Yeah. that's what i was they're in the main city leaning toward i think yeah okay it's not made abundantly clear though like I didn't realize Whether that I like, didn't know the answer until you world asked is. the question. I was like, "Oh, that's that's a great question." I don't even know what. Kind of killing me. <laughs> did they even name the kingdom? Like what the kingdom I is? I don't know. Because maybe like it's the with city. The it's yes, know. yes. Oh my god! It's okay. I'm not gonna be able to remember right now. But this is actually <laughs> one of the things I didn't like because I thought it was kind of dumb the name. But anyway, I'm not gonna be able to remember right now. Does It'll the book me. have a map? Does do any of us have the physical copy of the book? I do. I, <laughs> I also listen to that. I think audiobook. there is a map. Now that yeah. you say that, I'm an audiobook Andy for this one, so I have no context. It had a for literally weird. Anything. Name. No, no map. No map. No map that I see. What fantasy book? No map. Be real. No map. I don't see one. So no map. <laughs> so so no map. <laughs> you beat me to anyways, the joke by like anyways. two seconds. I'll reel us back. So in. no map. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I'll Focus, reel us back. Raven. Um. Okay. So back to Raven. So. 
I may get hated on for this, but I found Raven to be a bit too good and boring. I know a lot of people that read this book love Raven, but he reminded me of Aaron Aaron from Bridge Kingdom a lot, actually. Mm. His dialogue was really standard, and he was literally a textbook book boy with nothing special and no banter. Like, literally, I feel like if you took a checklist of broody book boy, he met every checkbox. But, like, if you had an other checkbox with, like, a little field to enter text in, like, I would have no notes. I would have nothing to put there. Like, he, he met every criteria, but he had nothing special about him. Yeah. And it's not like I dislike him altogether because there were moments where I enjoyed him. But overall, he was lacking. Mm-hmm. No, I totally yeah. agree. I, go girl, give us nothing. Because, like... He felt like every other love interest I've ever read. Like, I, I knew him immediately. I was like, okay, I know your whole shtick. You're very typical, you know. And the thing is, like, you you can't dislike him because there is nothing to dislike. There is nothing no. unique about him that yeah. you could even have a feeling on. Um, I think the most unique thing about him is that his room is messy. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's kind of new. <laughs> okay, quirky. Tea. Quirky. He's so quirky. I don't know. A man with a messy room? Yeah, but I feel like the book boys are usually <laughs> That's so true. Every up, man right? has a messy room. I don't know. I, I joke. A fantasy boy. A fantasy no, boy. You're fantasy. They're always so stuffy. That makes you different. Makes him different from the fantasy boys. I it agree. makes him realer. <laughs> it also- makes him... It makes- He's so relatable. He's so relatable. This raven with a Y. Yeah. Yeah. And his Uh, room wasn't even, I think she specified that his room wasn't that messy. It was just a little bit messy. Like, I think, I think she clarified. We can't dare to, We don't want to imagine him as slob. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he's so bashful. He's like, "Mm, I would be lying if I didn't say it was always like this. And it's like, okay. Okay, King. (laughs) Yeah. There's also And speaking of, talking about the dialogue too. Around page 200, Raven is apologizing to Elspeth, and he's apologizing about the highwayman attack, and his apology is just so disgustingly good. It's like, oh, it was so bad, guys. It was like, I'm so sorry for doing that to you. I would never do that again. And it was just like, dude, what? You don't have to justify it. You were trying to save your brother. Just say that. Just be like, yeah, I don't apologize. I was trying to save Emery. I was trying to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. Like, that's right. It was gross. It was disgusting. And that's how a lot of his dialogue was. Yeah, this is the same issue that I ended up having with Reese in uh, fucking A Court of Thorns of Roses series because he became – too perfect and too like fawning over the girl and like raven is like that but like times 300 because they were just in book one yeah and like yeah already at like midway through the point he's like at her feet groveling if she's even the yeah. size bit annoyed at him and it's just too much there's also a point where um speaking of dialogue he's like you shouldn't um, be interested in me because I'm such a traitor and I'm so bad and I'm just yeah I'm such so evil and it's and the like, highwayman all, gets hung yeah I'm like first of all cringe second of all you're literally not that bad like you are talking up such a game mm-hmm. that you cannot back up because your bitch ass is so moral like it's the royalty the king, that isn't moral you're the moral one like, yeah he's yeah. like i want to save my brother and i'm willing to do anything to do that and that um, makes I'm me such, such a bad, bad boy, boy. <laughs> I'm such a bad boy <laughs> Bro, I and know. i was gonna say i was gonna say like to the point about reese too just as a side note i agree that he gets like that throughout the rest of the series but i think one of the things that makes him a compelling character at the beginning is he's like I'm going to protect my city, like Valaris. You know, I'm going to protect this. At all like, I care mm-hmm. so much about protecting this city, and I'm not going to let anything come between me and protecting this city. And Zayden's and so, the like, same way. Has a like, committed thing. Right. And so you need that sort of, like, don't apologize for saving your brother. That's what you got got you here in the first place. Like, right. this, is, this is your mission. Commit yeah, to it. it. You know, you don't know this girl. She's new. You don't know Who's, this girl. You've known her for three hours. Dude, it's insane. Literally. She's not worth that. No, you yeah. don't know her. Kick her to the curb, bro. Please. Ugh. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I will say one thing I liked about Raven, and I can't, I don't have good evidence to back this up because <laughs> I don't know what it was. But I remember one time, there were a couple of lines that he said. There was one that was kind of flirty that was good that like kind of had me like, mm, kind of like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. But it was, they're just, 
there were some one-off like good little lines that yeah, he had um but i just wasn't enough i didn't think that they had enough chemistry to really justify that no there was Which, no yeah we'll get to that yeah we'll get to it. i'll talk yeah about ex- that. well and it brings us to their relationship and like yeah so we feel these ways that we do about <laughs> both of them separately and then we get this uh fake dating trope um between the two of them when uh, Elsbeth goes to live at Yu's house, so everyone can pretend that Raven is courting her. And um, yeah, just was not really here for it. Um, I wasn't super invested in either of them as characters, or at least neutral. But then when you bring in this fake dating, really like insta love type thing going on, I just, the 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 connection wasn't there. The chemistry wasn't there for me. Um, so I the only thing that I thought would make sense was like, because they are both infected, as we learn later in the book that they might have a bit of a a connection there and that they understand each other. You know, we love, we love a nice little trauma bond here, but um, uh, that wasn't really what brought them together in the first place though. So. I totally agree. I, I wanted a slow burn. I love slow burn. We talked about that in our tropes episode. We all love slow burn and there was zero slow burn. Like early on Raven, he wipes away her tears and he slides his hand over hers to comfort her and so on. And it was just, it was so annoying to me because they literally knew each other for like two hours at that point and they kissed like after three days of knowing each other. So there's zero build up there either. And the dialogue was, like, very mushy early on. And just so many things that could have been better with a slow burn. So many things. Yeah. it's And, too, like, I was really excited for the fake dating trope. I love a fake dating trope. And we just, like, it didn't deliver on anything. Because the whole point of the fake dating trope is that they're doing things that make them uncomfortable that they're like they're not mm-hmm. they should not mm-hmm. be in the headspace really that they like each other and because this was right. essentially insta love and he, he even says like oh, from the moment i met you i couldn't stop thinking about you so it's like it's not fake dating <laughs> because they're kissing almost immediately and i think even in terms of like performing the fake dating it's like one scene where he like grabs her yes. hand and she's like oh wait, 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 wait. but it's like <laughs> that's not fake dating like you're not delivering on the trope so like why no. do it no yeah I agree. it was kind and of I... unnecessary it was just so she could go live at castle U. like yeah. that it, that was the excuse to go live at castle U, which was so predictable yeah. and so ya yeah well and i don't think there was enough like the other thing about fake dating too like you said maddie about it being you know about the performance of it like the other part of that too is you know what do the people think and um, we get these moments when people around here um, are, you know, toward the end, even like literally asking if they're, if they really love each other and things like that. But I don't really feel like, like when she went to the U's, I don't think that there was like a huge, it, it wasn't this huge deal. There wasn't a ton of gossip about it. I mean, like maybe a little bit, but I don't know. The whole like fake dating, it just felt very thrown in. It didn't have yeah. the drama of fake dating, you well, know. that's a great point because the U's were all in on it. So the people that she would have to perform around they were mostly not around um, because mm-hmm. like his parents mm-hmm. are in on it. So they know why she's coming. Whereas like if it was like yeah. they had to go to the um, the spindles house, that would create right. a lot more of those circumstances where the fake dating right. matters because especially, okay, that would actually be way more interesting because you know, Miriam would be grilling them about mm-hmm. their relationship. And it's like, she didn't have any of that. They had no burden of proof. At, at yeah exactly house. it was more like a story that yeah. they passed on to yeah. like you know that they let loose to other people but it wasn't they didn't have that pressure of people really trying to like suss it out right. which is um, so weird because he's the king's nephew so you think it would be very it'd be a big deal yeah yeah this, yeah this mysterious daughter that like never comes around and like suddenly yeah. and they nobody also knows say, exists they also say at one point like this is the first time raven has shown interest in anybody and it's like then why are we chill like right now like hello can we i don't know there just needed to be a little bit more if she's because she's part of the royals there should be more of her having to deal with the politics and the social dynamics Mm -hmm. and the keeping up appearances and she should be bad at them because she's been in the damn woods for 20 years yeah yeah true you're so right i don't know whatever it's fine um (laughs) But it brings us to some fun side characters that we run into throughout the book. Um, 
So my favorite side character, I think this was it for a lot of us, um, was Elm. He's the mm-hmm. um, the prince's younger brother, and he's he's an ass in like a cute and charming way. Like he his dialogue was fun. He actually had banter with the female main character Elspeth. Um, sh- he kind of like pushes back on her in several ways mm-hmm. that in a way that raven is just like i trust you i believe you so there's no conflict there whereas elm is like i don't know you at all and like you're being brought into this thing that's literally like we're betraying the the king so like I- i'm gonna need you to like do a little bit more here <laughs> to like prove to me that you're trustworthy and so i loved him i thought he was real he's fun I like that he was a little bit of like a coward when he was like trying to stand up to his brother and she was like, just do it, <laughs> like go. And he was like, okay, I can do it. I'm a little scared without Raven here, but okay, I can. Like, it was just fun. It was a little bit like he was dynamic, you know? He was fun. Yeah. I loved Elm. I loved Elm. I actually found myself like hoping that Elspeth would end up with him, Same. which may be a hot take, Tea. but... Yeah. But I I was here for it. I was like, okay, I see a little little chemistry here. Yeah, they had chemistry. They had well, and I think I love too that um I think he fit in so well with so, you know, on one hand, maybe him and um Elizabeth can end up together. But I also just thought that he fit in so well with the whole like found family trope. Like mm-hmm. to yes. have this member of the family who is an ass, he's very silly. But also he deeply cares about his family, which is why he's not trustworthy of Elspeth for a bit, because he cares more. He actually has his priorities in order. Right. Um, yes. Raven could take some notes. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that he fit in great with that um, found family trope as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we also meet uh, Jesper, who is mm-hmm. Raven's cousin. Sister. Sister. Okay. Yes. Okay. Elm's cousin, Raven's sister. Um, yes. She's, like, sweet and, like, nice and kind of, like, just the wholesome one of the group. Um, For me, this was a character that I knew I was supposed to care about, but I didn't because there just wasn't, like, enough moments that felt unique. Um, It was definitely reminding me of the um the friend from Serpent in the Wings of the Night, the girlfriend that's, like, got sun powers or whatever. Yeah. What's her name? Micah. Micah. (laughs) Something. oh misha 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 yeah. i'm like i know i'm supposed to love you but i need a little bit more from you um yeah but like she was fine she could sick at one I point liked- we're supposed to be emotional it's fine i liked some things about her like i like that girls typically wear dresses in this world and she always wears you know pants and a destrier's outfit like i like that mm-hmm. i like that she poked fun at elspeth and raven after after their um special night together oh, um yeah. i liked her but i agree i think we could have gotten more like maybe some funny dialogue yeah. from her i think that would have been good something well and i think too that kind of character is so common in like a found family dynamic you know misha i think of um more and Akatar, yeah. um alice cullen and twilight like um you know this fun quirky cool kind of female side character and they can either i think be the highlight like i know for a lot of fans of twilight like alice cullen is like mm-hmm. a god you know like everyone loves alice um but i think that's because you get to see more of her kind of like inner conflict and stuff as well which to be fair longer series but mm-hmm. um yeah, that character always has such potential. It's just whether or not they kind of like nailed on the head. So she yeah. was cool. She was there, but I wasn't like super interested, you know? Yeah. And and I felt kind of similarly too about Ione, which is uh, mm-hmm. Elspeth's mm-hmm. Uh, cousin. And it we're kind of like brought into it like um, she's so sweet. She's so wholesome. Like Elspeth just wants to protect her because Elspeth is so dark and broody and mysterious and and edgy and blah 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 and Ione is like sweet and kind of blah blah blah. and almost instantly Ione um is more or less betrothed to the prince the mean prince Mm -hmm. and she gets the maiden card which is like it makes her very beautiful and I I guess it like also kind of turns her into a bitch I don't know she's kind of a bitch but like I'm more here for the bitch Ione than the Ione that we're supposed to miss and love and care for. Like, I'm here for the Agreed. Ione that's sassy and is like, can you grow up, Elspeth? Like, we're, we're out She's here making giving, money yeah. moves, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. I was she reminded here. me of that 
up the girlfriend in um was it iron flame yeah oh yeah it was iron flame the ex-girlfriend cat yeah that's who she reminded me of yeah and i felt like it was pretty obvious that she was trying to protect elspeth even though the maiden did make her kind of cold Mm -hmm. um i also think that maybe her and elm will get together because i definitely got a vibe between them um Mm -hmm. which i'm kind of Mm -hmm. here for because especially with her being this kind of like bitchy character like Mm -hmm. i think it kind of goes along with elm's personality so yeah i would like to see that there were moments where elm would like go out of his way to be like is my brother treating you well and i was like "Ah, we stand that man yeah he's so cute (laughs) and uh, the brother was not treating her well. Yes, shocker. No. <laughs> she said she was like for a brute, like as good as he knows how. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And I was like, he girl, was like, you tell true. them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They just yeah. hate each other. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of funny. Um, okay. Well, one side character, kind of a side character that we cannot forget about is mm-hmm. the nightmare. So I the three of us forget. were all texting about how much we loved the nightmare. Mm-hmm. He also kind yes. of has a sad backstory where he was a king and the Rowans hosted an uprising that led to his entire family being murdered, which is really sad. Um, and it kind of explains a little bit about how why he's so protective over Elspeth. I think he kind of he kind of maybe feels a little bit like a parental figure towards her or something like that. I think that the nightmare was like the best part of the story hands down he had great dialogue the rhyming was kind of hot um and he was funny in some parts and i don't know it was just apparent that he actually cared about us beth and cared about what happened to the U's. so while he's morally gray i do think he leans a little bit more towards like moral which i did like i'm still dying at the rhyming was hot i'm deceased and you know what you're kind of right I, ha- I have to, like, I have to give it to you. I don't know what it is, but I think you're kind of right. Yeah. A man who rhymes. A man who rhymes. Is that too much a man to who ask rhymes. For? Honestly. He was a poet, <laughs> and he didn't even know it. He didn't even know yeah. it. Let's go. Dr. Seuss Nightmare. We love it. We love it. Um, I-, yeah. I loved him. I thought he was interesting. I liked that he was really sassy. I-, I liked that he just straight up would call Elspeth out for being stupid a lot of times. And he's like, bro, I told you everything you need to know. You just didn't bother to think about it critically. And she was like, that's fair. Um, True. And I liked his backstory. That he was like, just like a mysterious. I was like, of course, he's the king that fell. Like, OK. But like, it- it- I don't know. I liked him enough that I didn't care that it was like, of course, he's the king that fell um i don't know he just was fun i the only criticism i have about the nightmares part in the story and this is mostly the symptom of being an audiobook andy for this is sometimes he would be talking and it would say like he's like talking through her and he would be like saying shit like that he wants to kill the rowans and everything to the rowans but then it it turned out like she she wasn't actually saying it out loud and so I def- there were moments where I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he's saying this right now. Oh, like, the things are about to go down. And then they, people yeah. just move on. So it was clear they didn't hear it. It was just in her head. And that might have been easier to understand in the book. But the audio book, it was a little bit confusing what he was saying through yes. her versus what he was saying to her. Yeah. And I think that that's definitely um, a case with just anytime you have that kind of like dual character or anything like that, like something in someone's Mm -hmm. mind, you know, that impacts the POV. Yeah. It's kind of tough. So, um, yeah, he, he, he was serving the entire time. Great dialogue, Mm -hmm. great backstory, great sass. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's clear that he cares about her. One thing that I did love too, is just like his evil rampages. Like when he takes over, he is so (laughs) he's ready to fight when he gets let out. He is about it. Let me tell you. So, uh, he tears these bitches up. Um, so I respect it. And, uh, one like random side thing that I also like to, um, talking about him being the King. I also really liked these like weird sort of, I guess, dreams, um, visions almost that Elspeth has where she kind of like, if I'm remembering correctly, where she like sees the King Mm -hmm. that one time in her dream or she like enters the room and like she sees this king and it's just very eerie and i thought that that was very like cool the first time that spooky. that happens yeah yeah it was spooky it was cool. i thought it was a little weird 
she tells us like I never dream except for right now and And that irritated me so and I was like that was dumb like do we have to say we never dream except for this like we can't just be like "Ah, I dream sometimes they're usually like weird and now it's this recurring dream like if she had this recurring dream and it wasn't immediately attached to the nightmare it would have been more interesting right um I don't know. I just or just yeah, like, and then she chilling. dreams again. She dreams again, like three chapters after that again. Yeah. And I was like, "What? You never dream, girl? Really? Like, yeah? Because what is the catalyst uh, for it? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's just that the well, I think, started. I think the catalyst. Yeah. Well, okay, no, that's true. Because I guess the one argument I could see is like being the catalyst for the dreams is that she is. Uh, they call it what, degenerating. So like mm-hmm. she is progressively the more she's asking for the nightmares help the more he's getting her mind and so maybe that's causing things like dreams to occur where he's getting Mm. more and more hold but i don't know that that's really what they were going for with this i think it was just that the book started and oh here she is she's never had a dream yeah it'd be different if it started and it was like i've been dreaming for a month now but i didn't dream at all prior to that or something Mm -hmm. like that like that would have been a little better i think or like you said too maddie like a recurring dream like i think that 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 would get across the really like eerie aspect of it without having to be like i've never had a dream in my life yeah first time (laughs) it's newcomer she's regenerating and correct me if i'm wrong i think the only time that we're told that she's used the nightmares powers before was when she was um escaping the physicians so and then the next time is when she's attacked by raven and elm so it's like her her uses for the nightmare she she gets like what like five and then she she's you know like it's true it's fast girl like you know like if she had done that earlier like we wouldn't even have this book because she only got five uses before he was like I'm, I'm, I'm here now. I'm, here I'm here done. Now. Or yeah, yeah, you're done. Actually, you're done. Yeah, done. I don't know. Interesting. I guess it's interesting. Um, so uh, our main kind of antagonist in this book. So we have this really powerful character in the nightmare, but then uh, we also have a really powerful character derogatory um, in uh, Prince Hoth Rowan. Which, as a side note, also being an audiobook listener this time. Um, I, his name is spelled H-A-U-T-H, I think. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's so cursed. Um, and I, I don't know. The spellings, they're just getting me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so we have Prince Hoth Rowan, who is the king's son and Elm's brother. And um, I'm just going to say that for me, this is uh, this is just Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty much. He, I just see him as this, <laughs> having this presence to him and he hates women and he is a royal and he does I, hate women he does that's hate all women. my criteria this man hates hates women um yeah so what did y'all think about him as a antagonist i, I he thought was he was a really good antagonist like kind of typical but i felt like he had reasons to hate the use and obviously elspeth later in the book um him using the chalice card on everyone was really was a really good scene we'll get to that later but i felt Mm -hmm. like that showed like kind of how bad he really is and i i was here for it yeah Mm -hmm. i thought i don't know i feel similarly about hoth as i felt about raven like met him like yeah he hates women he sucks he's got no moral compass like this is your typical villain like i'm on to the next like he wasn't giving anything unique i think the most unique thing he did was the chalice scene but i think i think it's unique for a different reason than you think kaylee so i'm excited to talk about that but um <laughs> yeah i don't know he like he's fine he's he's an antagonist it's yeah yeah, yeah. he didn't like excite me at any point yeah fair fair sure. um but we do have this main conflict that he's kind of working against the use for and that is we have a side character, um, Emery Yu, and he's Raven's little brother. Um, mm-hmm. Emery is infected and he's degenerating. So he's like losing his mind, basically. He'd he be saying mm-hmm. some wild shit out here. Um, <laughs> and he can True. kind of like see things that people can't see. Like he basically immediately knows um, Elspeth's secret. But the royal family is trying to get all the cards together and do like this ritual to get rid of the the mist or whatever but they need the blood of an infected person as a sacrifice and they've decided that it's going to be emery because allegedly because he's degenerating anyways 
Um, and so they're just going to sacrifice him as like a mercy kind of a thing. Um, and so the yous are like, we would rather you not sacrifice our yeah. baby boy just personally. Yeah. And so that's why they're working separately to gather all the cards and they picked out like their own sacrifice <laughs> that they're going to do that is more moral, I guess, than Emery. It's just anyone else, basically. Um, and so that's kind of what Elspeth gets pulled into, this whole plot to get the cards before the royal family gets the cards. Um, and there's like this whole secret movement going on. Um, and for me, I had kind of a hard time with this whole secret society thing because it's like a pretty serious act of treason and i feel like her barrier to entry (laughs) was like not that hard um it just was kind of like well if raven (laughs) likes her that's fine i know she had to go through the truth thing but again it was like she didn't really it felt very short (laughs) yeah Yeah, and it felt very fast to let her in you know yeah and and it also felt like at least to me, it felt very obvious that she was still not telling the full truth, which if I was on the committee, I would be like, she's still hiding things. Like, I do not trust her. Like, I, it was obvious that she was trying to leave something out. Like, I, hello? Am I insane? Like, I, I They were know. so desperate, though, like, because Emery's, he's dying already. Like, he's not only losing his mind, but he's also dying. Like, he's coughing up blood. He's getting really sick. And mm-hmm. the physicians are keeping him alive, like, prolonging his life, essentially. That's true. Um, yeah. So I think they were so desperate. Like, I get what you're saying. I just, I think they were really desperate. And they were like, yeah. okay, this is good enough. Yeah. And that they needed fair. her ability. Yeah. Because yeah, be, they really needed help them. it. Yeah. Yeah. But I agree. I, like, I guess the trope of the secret society thing just uh sorry i was just gonna add like that i just that particular thing i wasn't super interested in but hmm. i liked it i felt like it had a potential for found family but we just didn't really get that but i liked the idea of it a lot and i actually enjoyed how she got to join the use without much hesitation from everyone just because like typically with books there's such a long period where everyone's like we don't trust you and they're like i Mm -hmm. can be trusted and like it goes on for so long so maybe there should have been like a happy medium where like they had a little bit more hesitation towards her but not like too much yeah so that's how i felt about it i think maybe i would have liked it better if it felt like she was actually using her power when she was in because even the the like mission that she goes on she's like i just know that my dad has a well card so we can just go get it and then they go on like a mission to go get the well card and then it ends up like her dad just like gives it to her because he's like a nice dude or whatever and so her power really didn't come into play much at all at least for right i'm sure it will later but like it was not useful to the secret society in the sense that they were like, oh, my God, we know the we know the area that it's in. We just need, you know, like a freaking heat scan to see where it is like that to me would be like, oh, my God, they finally found the missing piece. Instead, they were just like, well, do you do you know where any cards are or what? They're like, We don't know anything about the older cards. And she was like, well, I know where another card is. And they were like, oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, this is the answer. Yeah. I don't know. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I guess part of it, too, is, um, like you said, I'm sure in the next book that'll get explored even more, I would think. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, so another thing that kind of happens near the end there is that we get a fun scene, like I mentioned earlier, where Hoth uses the chalice card on himself, Raven, Elspeth, Jesper, Elm, and Ioni where they all have to tell secrets, except for Raven, who's immune to the chalice's power, of course. Of course he is. So I liked this scene, but it was very YA, I will admit. And also, this killed me. Why would they drink the wine? Why would they drink the wine on the table? There's a mysterious six goblets of wine on the table just sitting there waiting for them. And yeah, they're like, literally, the way, she tells us it tastes like no wine she's ever had before. <laughs> and that continues to me. drink it. She's like, this wine tastes kind of weird. It's like, it tastes a little bit poisonous. Let me continue drinking it. Right. This And like they say they play this game before, like growing up. So I'm like, wouldn't y'all know the taste? I feel like at least the chalice should be magical enough that the wine just tastes like wine. 
But the fact that she yeah. was like, oh, yeah, it did taste uh, disgusting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah this was the worst one i've ever had in my fucking let life let me like, keep drinking it right let me finish yeah. my cup uh, yeah the whole I thing i don't know the premise i thought was a little silly i think it could have been done a little bit better but what i did like about this scene is that for me you know we've kind of been in all these conversations about how we don't like hoth and like they're kind of presented as our evil antagonists and whatever. And so when Hoth does this, in my mind, we're so on opposite sides of the aisle. I'm like, this is an act of violence. Like, it's about to get crazy in here. Mm-hmm. We're going to be, you know, duking it out. Like, he's he's on to us, you know. And uh, instead, it was more like when you're at the family reunion and you have that cousin that you beef with, but like you still kind of have to be nice to them and like keep up appearances for the family because you have to keep going with them. And so they kind of just have beef, but like they end up asking questions like who, who, so who has a crush on who? Oh my God. Do you (laughs) think Raven is hot? (laughs) Are you you in love love with him? And it's or like, do you cringe. think he'd be a better king than me? <laughs> yeah. It's like it's just like petty beef. Yeah, it's the it's like they're ten years old. But I liked the I liked that it was like oh okay this is genuinely how you would act if you had cousins that you had beef with like you just would have beef True. with them but you'd have to still be around them. But at the same time I was like this scene is fucking stupid and like a waste of my time. <laughs> and the only purpose of it was to hear um elspeth admit that he broke her wrist but we didn't even get to that so no no no. the whole purpose of it was to get elspeth to admit and not admit that she was in love with raven that was the whole purpose of it well and then well the other thing too was when raven gets into her head is like it breaks his own rule to get into her head to try to help her to lie and that's how we get the nightmare reveal to raven true because he goes in there and he's like He's like, whoa, what the hell is going on in here? Um, <laughs> I totally forgot about that. That's a yeah. good point. Yeah, I actually think that that's probably the main purpose that it serves is that Raven breaks his rule, goes into her head, finds out about the nightmare. Which, and like falls out side, of his chair. Yeah, like is so dramatic. It's just like, oh my God. Um, but I will say like, just a side note on that too. I had very mixed feelings about his reaction to finding out about um, the nightmare too, like once, um, so Elspeth um, has to recover from this whole incident, and they were talking to her, and he like is pretty like forgiving of, and I know that he says earlier in the book, like Raven says something about like we all have secrets that we have to keep, blah blah blah. But I don't know. Again, just that insta love, insta trust, you know, like he just yeah, girl is he's harboring so this monster in her head, right. and he's just like as much you know. shit as she gave him for not telling her he was infected within the first six hours yeah. of their meeting i really right. want him to be like are you fucking kidding me like right yeah like, get- yeah be yeah mad. and also pet peeve with these like truth telling scenes and this happens in both of the truth telling scenes is like if i ask you a yes or no answer and you're sitting there sweating fighting it like trying so hard yeah i already know the answer why are we pretending like the whole time they're like placating her and they're like you don't have to answer it's okay that you've already given the answer like it's it's so dumb it's such a dumb point of conflict that every single time they're asked a hard question they're like trying to fight against it as if that doesn't immediately reveal what the answer is like can i get someone who knows how to do a half truth can I get someone right. who knows how to skirt around a question? And and you know what? You know what I will say? Ioni, she gave me that. She gave me that. And she that did. gave her like a plus five in my book because I was like, finally, someone with a brain that's like, I told you that that's the truth. That's a half truth, baby girl. I told you that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. Elizabeth could just say True. I only served one broken. She served. Yeah, she did. She did. That was one of my favorite things about that scene is that she was like, all right. I'm done playing around. Like yeah, she's like, I'm not participating. And he was like, you have to. And she was like, I really don't. So. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. Yeah. You're right. I, yeah. I loved her. I really I like her. I really do. <laughs> she grew on me. She grew on me. Yeah. yeah. So then we get um, to the ending. And um, in the end, Elspeth's uncle betrays her and tells Hoth about her illness as a child. 
um, which hurts. Um, so Hoth knows that she has magical powers. And he also knows that it was her um, whose wrist he broke in the forest. Um, and he's going to have her killed along with the use for keeping her powers a secret. Um, but then Elspeth lets the nightmare take over her body. Hulk mode, baby. Uh, one last time <laughs> at um, a big cost. So he does take over her body permanently, uh, which she knows, but she's willing to let happen to protect the U's. Um, and then the nightmare agrees to help the U's find the rest of the cards for Emery. He kills um, or Orthy. Is that Orthy? Okay. Um, and hurts uh, Hoth really badly. And as a result, the king thinks that Elspeth was the whole problem and it had nothing to do with the U's. Um, so it's a pretty jam packed ending, but mm -hmm. I, the betrayal, like, even though it made me sad, like I was kind of like, all right, you know what? Like some high stakes stuff. I'm, I'm here for it. Um, I love the nightmare taking over, just going absolutely wild. Um, and yeah, I like that we kind of have a character death. We'll see. We'll see what it looks like in book two, but yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I'm, I, I liked it too. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Kaylee. Pop Even off. if it was like really predictable, like I feel like I saw that coming on page 45. Um, I don't know. It was predictable. The only thing I didn't like was that um, at the end, we see that Raven like knows she's in the dungeon and he's very casual about it. I don't know if you guys got that vibe too. Like he's just like, mm -hmm. he's very, he's very calm. He's just observing the whole thing. Like it was, it was really weird to me. Like I had weird vibes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I don't know. I, I did think it was a little weird. And there's like, again, we run into this thing where it, I wasn't fully sure if it was Elspeth or the Nightmare talking at some points. Um, I liked the betrayal, though. I liked that it was her uncle because I had kind of like stopped thinking about him for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. I wish there had been a little bit more buildup in like, his motivation because like obviously we know he we know he's trying to um get ioni betrothed to get power or whatever i would have liked to see maybe even like some tension between him and his brother who is yeah Elspeth's father to be like trying to keep up with her and like that also gives him a reason to be kind of pissed that elspeth is also just like finding herself integrated and in closely to the royal family even though he had to do this like crazy thing to get ioni in there you know um True. i would have liked to see a little bit more bitterness like ugh, my brother always gets what he wants and then like my family on the other hand we're stuck caring for this like infected child that he doesn't want to deal with and like taking on all this risk and blah blah blah, blah. um mm -hmm. but in general i liked it i liked the nightmare i hope elspeth is dead forever smiley face oh Okay. Wow. That's a hot take. That's how I feel. She's boring. She's whiny. I want I want the nightmare as Elspeth to romance Elm and then I'll be happy. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let me digest that for a second. I'm kinda I'm kinda into it, me thinks. It's kinda hot, right? They could do poetry mm. together. I, they would run back I'm here and for forth. It. Yeah. It would be mm. so fun. Better yet, what about Jesper? Okay. Okay, I could be into I'd it. I'd be here for that. I'm down. So, like, a nightmare. <laughs> okay, and Jasper. I see. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Raven needs a date. I don't know. I don't know. Some Anyone else? I don't know. Ioni? I don't know. Someone else. Maybe Raven he just needs to, needs to, to be therapy. alone. Yeah, maybe he yeah. just needs to be alone. <laughs> Raven needs to work on himself a bit. Yeah. He does. He needs to not so fall, fall so hard so fast. Yeah, he needs to so learn true. a lesson. <laughs> so true. Okay. Um, well, it's time for everyone's favorite part of the pod. Um, it's our hot takes and our pour overs. Um, so I will go first. Um, for my pour over, um, I'm still wondering why they would choose to sacrifice Emery, who's a royal, um, and not some rando infected person that they scoop up from the dungeons. Because it seems like people get infected with like regularity like it's not like a couple years in between when they find infected people um so i'm wondering if there's more to the motivation of choosing emery like they think he's gonna shame the family or something like that um and then a side note footnote <laughs> onto that is i know that they're like scooped up and sent to the dungeons to be burned or whatever but i'm kind of like 
is that really what they're doing? Like, do we have evidence that's really what they're doing? Or is there something more sus going on when they scoop up all these like magic users, like Mm. a secret workshop down there where people are doing stuff? I don't know. Could be fun or something. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, they could be using them for their own. Yeah. Since they have, because don't they have, you get magical abilities. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, as an infected person so yeah. an army of infected yeah and it's made clear that like if you have a good Perhaps. enough power the king will like be like oh i don't see it you know so it's like right. i don't think it's beyond the realm to think that maybe there's other uses for the blood of infected or secret powers or yeah. something like that i think could be an interesting sick thing to find out agreed so, that's my email. I like um it. for my hot take this book had every trope possible, and they all were done poorly. Um, we wow. legitimately start out with a Cinderella story. She's got stupid stepsisters and an evil stepmother that doesn't want us to go to the ball. That ends up going essentially nowhere. It's over in like five pages, so I don't even know why it happened. We're thrown into a secret society and immediately welcomed in. Then we have a fake dating trope where we get like one scene that's like relevant to fake dating. We move through all the stages of these tropes so quickly um, and she's she's balancing this other plot line of the cards and all this stuff. I just feel like she took on a little too much <laughs> to actually execute well, like pick one trope and see it through, pick a couple tropes, but like it just was done so quickly. The pacing was just so fast, I think, um, that we never really mm-hmm. got to sit in a trope and enjoy it and be like, ah, fake dating, like oh my gosh, this is an iconic moment. That's why we love this trope, you know? We didn't have yeah. those those moments to really savor. Right. I agree. Right. That's a good take. It's hot, but it's a good, good take. That's my take. Um, so for mine, uh, for my pour over, um, I would say that I'm still kind of just thinking about the concept of the cards. Uh, like I said earlier in the episode, I did really like the cards. Um, they were, but they're easy to lose track of there's so many and i really just thought they were cool but even kind of like you know heavily reliant on things like the mirror card but then um just not i think it was the mirror um that would make them invisible i think is that right yeah Mm -hmm. i think think so yeah i think so um but then just i don't know they were kind of all over the place beyond that so i would like to see those maybe more kind of consistently or maybe a deeper dive or something into that Mm -hmm. um and then my hot take is that I think the nightmare should have taken over Elspeth a lot sooner. Um, personally, yes. for him to him to be this powerful, you cannot tell me that she has lived her life like infected for this long, dealing with his ass for this long, and she hasn't called in a favor more than once. Like, right. girl, she she couldn't have known that it was gonna be like five times. I mean, she knew that there was. Yeah, they say all the time, like, oh, there's a what is it? price to pay or some shit like yeah so like she knows but also like you can't tell me she wasn't gonna call in favors earlier i feel like the degeneration could have happened earlier like more noticeably i don't Mm -hmm. know i i think think yeah he's powerful too he wants out he might care about her but he also wants out so he would be manipulating her to use his powers more often even if it was in small ways and like yeah even if i think there was something that was tackier but more obvious like a mark that kept getting bigger or more of her veins turning black or something to kind of hold Mm -hmm. on to that was like okay we can see the progress rather than just like after five times like sorry boo that's it like you should have known the price the price is the cost and you should have known like yeah not to bring up not to bring up a god killer that we were all super big fans of but (laughs) um one thing i did like if you did listen to the episode was that um there's this kind of scene where Sketty, this little god, like kind of uses his lies and kind of manipulation to eventually kind of take over and stuff like that. And like I think that even if the nightmare cares about Elspeth, he also has surely his personal motivations to be free. For He's sure. always mm-hmm. talking about wanting to get out. So anyway, I think he could have he kind of gone evil a little sooner and just like be like, all right, eh, my turn. My mm-hmm. turn. So. I agree. Or at least he could have like spoken through her more than one more than like that one time where she randomly yeah. said like right the, stated the book of alders or whatever like mm-hmm. more than more than just that i think leading yeah. up to it yeah yeah um okay 
my pour over, I have two. So first I'm pouring over what the POVs will be for the next book because I'm really hoping that it's all from Nightmare's POV and not from Raven's because I'm <laughs> sick. I am sick of love interest POVs. I'm, I'm sick. just, <laughs> I'm sick of it. So it's that's my first pour over. POV, let's be real. I know, I know it will be, but I don't want it. Mm-hmm. I don't want it. You're right. Um, My second pour over, I don't, and this goes along with Maddie's uh, pour over a little bit, but I don't understand why Orthy didn't just, they didn't line everybody up in the whole town and Orthy like tested them with his claw. Like, I don't understand why they never did that. It just, especially knowing that there are like infected people among them, like, why wouldn't they just be like, all right, we're testing everybody. They have the power to do that. It didn't make any sense. Because it really is, like, in the beginning True. of the book, she's like, I'm the only one that survived. And they're like, that's right. No one else survived. And at least this is, like, the first smart thing she does in the whole book is, like, she's like, if I survived, like, other people could have. And then it's, like, yeah. every damn person we meet is like, yeah, I was infected, but, like, I'm just chilling now. True. So yeah. it's like, bro, they're everywhere. So if the king really hates it, he would absolutely have some kind of policy like that. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, my hot take is that the nightmare should have been the love interest of this book. I was here for it in the beginning. We were all here for it. And Rachel Gillig really missed an opportunity to do something new and exciting, which is kind of weird because earlier I was like, he's kind of a parental figure and I'm realizing that now, but (laughs) I was still here for it. Well, (laughs) not, not here for that. Not here for that part. Yeah. Let me clarify. Let me backpedal a bit. <laughs> a relationship with a monster yeah. is fine. I can justify that, but you know, parental is where we cross the line. Yes. We we definitely draw okay. the line there. We definitely draw the line there. Have you guys read I love Book that. of Night by Holly no. Black? No, but I've meant to. Okay. Yeah. Without seeing too much, I think we should read it. It's really fun and good. So Okay. Okay. No, we'll good read time. it. Yeah. But yes, I agree, Kaylee. I think you're right. It would have been fun. Yeah, love it. Not daddy nightmare, but hot poet, poet nightmare. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> we don't support. Maybe I'm a nightmare rental. just yeah. dressed yeah. like a daydream. Yeah, that's so um, true. Love it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Before we go, let's talk about our ratings and favorite parts of the book. So I'll go first. I originally gave this a 3.9, but I'm going to drop to a 3.7. So I'm going to say 3.7 out of 5. The drama. I really enjoyed the book, but the dialogue was so bad. The dialogue was very bad, and I did not enjoy the romance of it. I enjoyed the creativity and the story of the book, so that's where my 3.7 comes from. My notes, I, I wrote, my very last note that I wrote was predictable, but I still love the vibes, and I stand by that. And then my favorite part was when we learned about um, the ending, like, from Raven's kind of POV and how Nightmare killed Orothy and maimed uh, Ha. I really liked the horror of that scene. I thought it was really, mm-hmm. I thought it was a good moment. Yeah, it was pretty intense. It's good. Um, so for my rating, um, I'm going to, I actually might do the same as you, Kaylee, because I had, like, a 3.8, but I do want to drop mine slightly, but I don't want to be a copycat. So I don't know. Three six, three seven, something like that. Um, it wasn't quite a four for me, but it was close. Like I really enjoyed the story and thought the infection in the cards are unique. Um, but because I didn't love Elspeth, um, that made my rating lower. Just kind of having to be in her POV, I was kind of like, eh. but love Nightmare. Interested to see more of him. Um, hopefully, I'm sure in book two. Um, and then my favorite part was um, anytime the Nightmare would take over again. We just we stand. Um, it was brutal. It was chaotic. Uh, the let me out thing with him was like very haunting and just like you get the sense of this just like really powerful he's so powerful and he keeps it contained but if you just like let him unleash he's pretty haunting so yeah he's yeah. ready anything with him he's ready he's ready to go he's ready he's to fight so ready so <laughs> i love it yeah yeah that was great um for me uh my rating was a three of five um it just wasn't this wasn't written for me um it made me feel like an old woman because i just felt like it was so ya the whole time which is funny because it's it's new adult technically but 
uh kaylee i think dropped the lore that this was like originally written as ya and then the publisher was like can we do new adult and she was like sure and then she kept it all ya essentially sorry if you can hear my dogs um but anyways (laughs) it just tries to handle too many plot lines and tropes so none of them were executed well um and then for my favorite part can you hear my dogs (laughs) yeah i love it we can hear them, but it's okay. They're agreeing with they you. They feel the same way. Yeah, they're, they support they're it. so mad. Um, it's Opinionated. Fine. Yeah. So for my favorite part, um, I loved when the nightmare would sass Elspeth and basically call her stupid for not putting things together quickly. I feel like he like really kept her in line and was just like, be better, honestly. Um, so yeah. just love him. Accountability partner. That's right. We, in our lives. <laughs> That's right. we all yeah. need one. We all need a nightmare in our lives. You yeah. Know? That's so true. It's true. Um, a nightmare love interest. Yes, we need it. We need to. We need to fix it. Give it big. to me now. Yeah. Yep. Um. Okay. So if everyone has said their piece, that is all the tea that we have on one dark window. Um. Next week we're going to be talking about our book goals and anticipated reads of 2024, and then the following week we're going to be spilling the tea on Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. So a different vibe. Yes. Um. But it this is a book that's been on our TBRs, all of our TBRs for an eternity. So we're tackling yep. it. We're very excited. <laughs> I'm so ready. <laughs> um. You can also stay up to date with the latest tea on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube by following us at, at Spill the Novel Tea on all the things. And while you're there, let us know, did this book live up to the hype for you? How do you feel about Elspeth? How do you feel about Raven being spelled with a Y? Um, I need to know. <laughs> let us the real <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> so share your hot take with us. We're excited to read it. Um, and we will see you next week.